Let's move on to proposition number seven. Given two straight lines, constructed on a straight line from its extremities, and meeting at a point, there cannot be constructed on the same straight line from its extremities, and on the same side of it, two other straight lines meeting in another point, and equal to the former two respectively, namely each to that which has the same extremity with it. Sounds rather complicated, but it's actually not too bad. So let's construct what he's talking about. So let's say we have some line segment, which Euclid is going to call AB. We're going to build two other line segments off of that, and they're going to meet together in a point C. Now what he's saying is, suppose we build off of the same line segment AB, two others, and they meet in some other point, let's call it D. What he's saying is that it is not possible to build this such that AD is equal to AC and that DB is equal to CB. This construction over here, this other triangle, must have sides which are different. That is to say, we're going to attempt to show that this construction is absurd. It can't be done. And let's turn back to the text. For, if possible, Given two straight lines AC and CB constructed on the straight line AB, and that's what we've done. We've got the straight line AB, and we've constructed AC and CB off of that, meeting at the point C. Let two other straight lines AD and DB be constructed on the same straight line AB on the same side of it, meeting in another point D, which we've got over here, and equal to the former two respectively, namely each to that which has the same extremity with it, so that, as we've labeled in the diagram, CA is equal to DA, and CB is equal to DB. And what we're going to do, lastly, to complete this construction, which, again, we're claiming is an absurd construction, it can't be done, actually, we're going to join C to D. And as I said, we're attempting to show that this construction is absurd. So we're supposing that we can do this, and we're going to bring out the absurdity, and therefore show that this is indeed impossible. Then, since AC is equal to AD, so we have AC being equal to AD, notice that here we have from A to C to D, we have an isosceles triangle, and we've already proved in Proposition 5 that this angle must therefore be equal to this angle. Those two angles opposite the two equal sides. And this is what Euclid says. The angle ACD is also equal to the angle ADC. And then what does he say next? He says, therefore, the angle ADC, so that's this angle right here, ADC, is greater than the angle DCB. And he's speaking of this angle right here. Now, why does he say this? If you take a look at this, these angles over here, notice that the angle DCB is a part of the angle DCA. This is but a part of the angle DCA. Therefore, DCB must be lesser than DCA, but DCA is equal to CDA. The angle ADC, ADC, must be greater than DCB. And I'm just writing it like this with the greater one on top just to keep track of the different angles that we're speaking of here. Therefore, the angle CDB, so that's this angle right here, is much greater than the angle DCB. And why is that? Have a look at this angle CDB here, and notice that the angle CDA is a part of that one. So the angle CDB must be still greater. And hence CDB, as Euclid says, is much greater than DCB. But we also have the fact that CB and BD are equal. And once again, we use proposition number five to conclude that therefore, the angle CDB, CDB, that's right there, CDB is actually equal to the angle 
DCB, which is over here. But why is that absurd? Remember we said CDB is greater than DCB. So we've shown that the greater angle, CDB, is actually equal to DCB. Here's CDB. That's actually the same as DCB. So it's both, CDB is both greater and equal to DCB. But if it's greater, it cannot be equal. Hence, we have the contradiction. And hence, this whole construction is absurd. And therefore, we must conclude that this construction cannot be done. And therefore, this proposition is true.